How's it going, Grant here? Welcome back to the channel. And today I've got the all new 2020 Mac Mini here. And there's been a lot of talk about this because it's one of the first Macs to have Apple's custom M1 chip. So let's go ahead and unbox it. I'll compare this to my current 2012 Mac Mini and I'll test it out and I'll give you my first impressions. So let's take a look. Okay, so the unboxing experience is pretty straightforward and simple. Once you take off the protective plastic and lift off the lid, you're presented with the Mac Mini itself. You also get a power cable and the standard quick start guide and metallic Apple sticker. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the Mac Mini itself. And this resembles pretty much the exact design from the previous Mac Minis. And you can see the anodized aluminum finish with the reflective Apple logo there. This is what you get on the front and on the sides really nothing. But if you flip it over, you can see the Mac Mini right there. And normally this used to be removable and you could access at least the memory and the storage and replace that yourself. Now it's all soldered in. So you have what Apple calls unified memory with their M1 chip. So the memory is integrated into the chip itself as well as the flash storage. So if you're gonna get a Mac Mini, be sure to get the memory and storage options that you're gonna need because you cannot upgrade it yourself later like you could on previous Mac Minis. And let's go ahead and take a look at the back ports here to see what you can plug into the Mac Mini. So you can see the power button right there along with the power cable input. You've got Ethernet cable, you have two Thunderbolt ports slash Type-C ports, a full HDMI port there, two USB-A ports, as well as a 3.5mm headphone jack for external speakers or a headphone. And of course these are just some vents there to control some of the cooling. And so that's pretty much what you're going to see on the Mac Mini and the set of ports that you're going to get there. Okay, and so let's compare the new M1 Mac Mini from 2020 to my previous 2012 Mac Mini. And as you can see, face value, they look pretty much exactly the same. And the only difference here, you're gonna see on the front, you don't really have anything. I think that might be a microphone right there. But on the 2012 version, you're gonna see right here, you're gonna have an IR port. This used to be compatible with Apple's remote because people were using this like home theater PCs at the time where you could load up some software and you could use it to record your TV and do all those kind of things. And this allowed you to control it with a remote. But otherwise, quick size comparison, pretty much when you stack them up, they're the exact same size. Lift them up here and you can see they're pretty much the same thickness. Okay, so flipping them over, let's compare the bottoms. You saw the bottom of the 2020 version. The 2012 version, pretty much the same, except you have these little thumb placements so that you can actually unscrew the bottom. So you can just twist it over like that. So you can see with the open port there. And this is removable. And you can see here, you can access basic things here in your Mac Mini. So you can actually replace your memory. So I'll go ahead and zoom in here. This is actually two, as you can see, they're eight gig RAM modules. So I've got 16 gigs, that's the max supported amount. So I maxed out this Mac mini, 16 gigs of RAM. I have a, also replaced the storage on this. You can actually access underneath the hard drive. I put in a one terabyte SSD into this thing. And so that's why it's really lasted me since 2012. But it was really nice to get upgrade the RAM and storage here on the previous Mac mini models. And you cannot do that here on the M1 Mac mini. Okay, so looking at the ports on the back of the 2012 Mac Mini, the power and the power adapter are in the same location along with the Ethernet port. You had FireWire, if you remember FireWire cables. You've also got an HDMI cable, a traditional Thunderbolt cable, so it's not a Type-C version there. And you've got four USB Type-A ports. You had a SD card slot, which is nice if they would have kept that on this version in 2020. Having that SD card slot there is really nice. And you had a headphone jack just like you do on the 2020 version. And you also had an audio in port, which you do not have here in the 2020 M1 version. And same vent placement here on the bottom for cooling. Okay, so now that we've unboxed it and we've checked it out, let's go ahead and plug it in, set it all up. I'll test it out and give you my first impressions. So hold on, I'll be right back. Hey everyone, so I've been using the M1 Mac Mini for a few hours now just to give you my first impressions. And off the top, it definitely is a fast machine. I'm just not overly impressed just yet. And that's pretty much because the M1 chip was so hyped up that my expectations are just really, really high. So I'll be using it over the next several weeks to see if that changes, but I'm not quite there just yet. And of course you can launch apps and basic apps will all launch within less than one bounce on the dock. But in my experience, you can get that from pretty much any other Mac, especially out of the box. Now, what I really wanted to get out of this was a better video editing experience and faster video export times because that's primarily what I do on these Macs is edit these videos. So I upgraded to a 2015 15 inch MacBook Pro and that's definitely been faster. But even while editing videos, I would sometimes have to close down the app, restart just to get the performance back up. And so I was really hoping for a better experience in that regard from the M1 Mac mini. And I figured Apple would definitely deliver using their own chip, optimizing that with their software. 
and it definitely is pretty fast um, but just for some context my video editing isn't very complicated I don't make very fancy videos I just use iMovie because it supports all my editing needs and the most complex videos that I edit are my camera comparisons which can average maybe 20-25 minutes and generally export those in 4k and so the 15 inch MacBook Pro would export those in about 45 minutes to an hour and I was hoping to get those export times down and so what I did was I tested that out I'm working on the camera compression right now and I exported that on both the 15 inch MacBook Pro and the M1 Mac mini it's a 25 minute file right now and I exported them at 4k I restarted both machines first and I fired up only iMovie so that was the only thing running and I took screenshots of how the memory and CPU usage was before actually doing the export and I also took screenshots of memory and CPU while doing the export and so what was actually interesting was that the 15 inch MacBook Pro finished that export in 45 46 minutes and the M1 Mac mini finished it in 40 minutes so faster on the M1 Mac mini but not the gains that I was hoping to get uh, 6 to 7 minute gain not what I was expecting and I did that test twice and they both exported at exactly those same times and what was interesting was on the 15 inch MacBook Pro it did get very warm and the fans were running the whole time but the memory usage wasn't checked it was using up maybe 8 to 10 gigs at any point in time so a good amount of headroom as far as the RAM was concerned but the CPU was being taxed pretty hard it was at over 90% utilization for most of the time but on the M1 Mac mini it was pretty much just the opposite where memory usage was actually a little bit higher than I wanted I went with the base model 8 gigs of unified memory on the M1 chip and people were saying and predicting that since the 8 gigs of memory were on the M1 chip that it would perform more efficiently it'd be closer to the performance that you would see from a traditional 16 gigs of RAM when you have the normal RAM slots but memory was a little bit too high for me um, it was using maybe six to seven gigs at any point in time and so not as much headroom on the RAM as I was hoping for but the CPU was super efficient it was very low utilization the whole time which is why it was mostly cool to the touch I didn't hear any fans at all now while that memory utilization looked a little high it's not like the machine was slowing down at all I could probably click around and it'll just be fine I didn't feel like it was gonna be any kind of bogging down of that machine utilizing seven of the eight gigs of RAM so it seems like for me it's gonna be just fine as far as performance that's the most intense thing that I'm gonna do on that machine and it's holding up just fine but again we'll see how it holds up over more usage I was just really hoping for faster export times I didn't see that now as far as utilizing and editing videos in iMovie it definitely is faster iMovie launches faster I have a pretty big video library in iMovie and it usually takes a while to load on even my MacBook Pro it definitely launches and loads faster on the M1 Mac mini opening a project in iMovie also launches a lot faster but I do see some beach balls and so I know a lot of people were saying that you'll never see a beach ball again on these M1 chips but I'm seeing them in iMovie and they're not really long so they're not really annoying they're really quick like one to two seconds but I am seeing it so just to let you know my experience there in full transparency so those are just my first impressions after using it for a little bit of time but I did want to put it through a real use case and one of the most intense things that I'm going to do on that Mac and while it did perform well it just didn't perform as well as I was hoping so I'll keep using it and I'll let you know what my overall experience feels like because I feel if I use it over a longer period of time I'll get a better sense of is it really improving my workflow is it condensing the amount of time for me to do what I need to do on it and so I'll give you an update later but in the meantime let me know what you want to know about this M1 Mac mini and I'll see if I can answer your questions so that's going to do it for this video and as always thanks for watching